Hey guys, welcome back to The Binger. It's been a long road since the first Iron Man movie was released in 2008. Fans have been treated to a ton of incredible tech, one-liners, and battles, but Tony wouldn't have gotten very far without one thing, his suits. They're powerful, fast, stronger than steel, and are, simply put, legendary. In this video, I'll be looking at the best of the best of Iron Man's armor from both the MCU and the comics. Are you ready? Let's go. Mark 1. Okay, alright, you got me. Compared to the rest of Tony's suits, Mark I is a rusted tin can. However, its importance should never be underestimated. After all, without the OG suit, the rest would never have happened. Plus, Tony built it under some seriously pressurized conditions. Not only was he being held captive against his will, but he was also trying to keep his old ticker from getting pierced by the shrapnel. Talk about multitasking! I struggled to get a paper in on time in high school, and my life wasn't on the line, only my academic future, but the less said about that, the better. It wasn't streamlined or pretty to look at, but Mark I did what Tony needed it to, and then some. It also introduced the sheer power of Iron Man to the world, demonstrating how he could defeat the bad guys. In the comics, the first suit has more to it than what is shown in the movie. A flamethrower and tear gas grenade all come as standard, which isn't half bad for something knocked up in a pinch. It may not be as all singing, all dancing as Tony's future extravaganzas, but it's the mother of all suits. Everything that comes next has a lot to thank Mark I for. Mark III. Ah, here it is. This is more like it, right? Look at those sleek lines and the iconic red and gold colors that we all know and love. There's nothing quite like Mark III. Took a couple of tries for Tony to hit the winning formula, but he found the right combination of agility, speed, and strength with this version. This suit made Iron Man a true superhero, bringing with it a look that was simply unmistakable. Once the public saw this bad boy flying through the sky, they knew for sure it was Iron Man. None of this it's a bird, it's a plane nonsense that's reserved for cape-wearing superheroes. Just the glint of red and gold metal as Iron Man flashes through a blue sky. That's art right there. I'll fight anyone who disagrees. With Mark III, Tony upgraded it to contain the Repulsor Ray hand cannons, the most defining part of every suit that followed. Although it was still fairly primitive in terms of technology, it deserves recognition for being one of the founding fathers. Respect your elders is a timeless phrase for a reason. Mark VIII, Silver Centurion. The red and gold aesthetic was introduced way back in the mid-60s. By the time the 80s rolled around, it was time to give Iron Man a makeover. Complete with broad shoulder pads, very on trend at the time, the suit marked the beginning of a new phase for the superhero. While the red stuck around, the gold plates were replaced with sleek silver. Known as the Silver Centurion, the suit kept a lot of the features of its ancestors, but went one step further. The repulsors and the unibeam were given a revamp, but that wasn't all. New lasers were installed, giving Tony the ability to kick more butt than usual. The Silver Centurion was the Swiss Army knife of Iron Man suits. Just when you think you've got it figured out, up pops another tool. Who doesn't want that? It's interesting to note that one of the stories from the comics, Armor Wars, highlighted the firepower of the Silver Centurion. The movie Iron Man 2 was based on it as Tony battles to keep his suit technology away from the bad guys. As far as flying weapons go, this one is up there with the greats. I've got a couple more in my arsenal to throw your way, so stick around. Mark V. If you're a major comic book nerd like me, then welcome, you've found your tribe. Fans of the graphic works might recall that way back in the beginning of Iron Man, things weren't as flashy. The MCU would have us believe that all was worked out and stylized from the get-go, but it took some time to get there. Sure, we see Tony develop his inventions over the course of his on-screen career, but in the books, it was a little different. Marvel Studios have definitely used a little creative fairy dust. Way back when, Tony carted around his entire suit in a little suitcase. Yeah, the suspension of belief is hugely important when it comes to comics, let's face it. Readers might question its plausibility now, but decades ago it was all just part and parcel of the genre. Marvel Studios could have left that idea in the dirt and ignored that it ever happened completely, but they chose to do the opposite. Instead, they paid homage. In Iron Man 2, Tony was confronted by the uber-vengeful bad guy Ivan Vanko as he was at a racing event. Luckily for him, he had a suitcase in tow, although it's in Pepper's possession and he almost didn't get it in time. When he did, what pops out is the lightweight, transportable Mark V. It's the first time we see Tony don the suit in a public place without having to go home and do a quick outfit change. The suit has some serious advantages, namely the fact that it's a portable system that folds itself. Hello, convenience! However, this was still an early experimental piece that Tony was testing out, so lacked the firepower of its older brothers. Mark 23, Thorbuster. 
When you're fighting someone as incredible as Thor, you better be packing some power. It's easy to forget sometimes that Tony is still just a human, albeit a genius one with awesome skills. In the movies, he doesn't have many issues with Thor, but in the comics, it's a different story. In the MCU, Thor has been presented as a lovable god of thunder even if it's a slightly arrogant one. He's one of the good guys, an Avenger. However, he's had a couple of dodgy moments in the books. At one point, he tried to rule all of Earth, which went down like a lead balloon with Iron Man. Knowing that the best way to fight fire is with fire, Tony created a suit powered by Asgardian magic. Not only did the armor look shiny and indestructible, but it performed well too. Appearing in the 2003 comic book Iron Man Volume 3, this getup was modeled on the Destroyer, one of Thor's enemies. In normal circumstances, Thor would have been able to wipe the floor with Iron Man. He would have taken one look at him and the hammer would have done the rest with a handy bolt of lightning thrown in. The Thorbuster armor survived the head-to-head, -head, but would later be destroyed when the god ripped it to pieces, never to be seen again. It's a cry and shame that it no longer exists, as there's so much that they could have done with it. Iron Man is currently alive in the comics, though, so it'll be interesting to see if he ever creates something similar in the future. Mark 48, Stealth Suit. Even those with showboat tendencies and big personalities like Stark have to go unnoticed sometimes. Sure, Tony loves to flaunt what he's got, but there are times when he needs to fly under the radar in every sense of the word. When you've got a sensitive mission to adhere to or a bad guy to take down, the element of surprise is priceless. Enter Mark 48, a super stylish yet highly stealthy suit that ticks all the boxes for saving the day. By this point, Tony was no stranger to tinkering with stealth suits, but it's this version that stands out more than the rest. What's so cool about this one in particular? Allow me to educate you at the risk of sounding like a used car salesman. Advanced cloaking systems meet with holographic disguises, reflective armor, and some seriously inventive weapons. And it's all available for the bargain price of $1,000. <laughs> Just kidding. This one's a ride you can't buy in a dealership. The only downside is that the other staple features, like the repulsors, aren't as powerful as non-stealth versions of the suit. You can't be blasting around all over town if you're going incognito. Mark 38, Bleeding Edge. Carrying around a suitcase was great and all, but it wasn't going to cut it in the long run. Instead, Tony scratched his head and poured some of his hard-earned cash into nanotechnology. With the help of microscopic robots, Tony had the suit with him all the time. All he had to do was give the command and the teeny tiny little dudes assembled the suit around him. It was a hit in the comics and a hit in the MCU. Known as Bleeding Edge, the suit came to life in the movies. Considering Tony's expansive brain, it's a wonder it took him this long to get to Mark 38. The impressive armor didn't appear in the comics until 2000. 2010 after writers took their inspiration from Iron Man's on-screen appearances. This nanotech certainly made the MCU more interesting as it looked impressive. Of course, with Tony now gone for good, we can kiss goodbye to all those beautiful visuals once and for all. <laughs> I'm not crying, you're crying. Mark 46, Hulkbuster. Ever had an argument with a coworker and wanted to settle it out in the parking lot? Well, I should hope not. <laughs> Leave that kind of animosity to the Avengers. In the movie, Tony butts heads with the rest of the gang on multiple occasions. His beef is mainly with Cap, who's noble and tends to lead with his heart. Tony, on the other hand, is more logical and analytical. Lest we forget the events of Captain America Civil War where they end up beating each other to a pulp, there's plenty to be said about that, but I want to rewind it all to the back of the second Avengers movie, Age of Ultron. Remember when Hulk falls victim to Scarlet Witch's mind games and destroys half of Johannesburg in the process? It's no wonder that Banner is reluctant to get his green on. Tony had prepared for the eventuality that Hulk would go rogue, putting together the suit to end all suits. Known as Hulkbuster, the armor was strong enough to withstand a fight with the Jade Giant himself. It was an epic battle without the menace, as Iron Man just wanted Hulk to calm down and have a little nap. Hulk doesn't exactly like to be reasoned with when he's in a fit of rage, so it didn't go well. Thanks to the giant-sized suit, Iron Man was able to knock Hulk unconscious, proving that size really does matter. Mark 50. I can't let any of this go without mentioning the last suit that Tony wore in the MCU, can I? Not only was it legendary because the dude perished in it after wielding the Infinity Gauntlet, but it was awesome in countless ways. The 50th suit made sure that Stark finished with a bang. As far as the MCU is concerned, the chiseled red and gold getup is the culmination of over 10 years of effort on Tony's part. Friday is built into it and boasted some seriously top-notch features. If Iron Man wanted a little boost to get him from A to B faster than Thanos could snap, uh, well, almost, he could bust out the nano wings. Nanotech launchers sit in both arms, ready to repair or rebuild any damaged parts of his suit, something that comes in handy when battling the likes of Thanos. When the Mad Titan stabs Tony in Avengers 3, he's able to deploy these little robots to close the wound. 
there's really no limit to what this suit can do. Tony's removable arc reactor housed the entire suit, so he always had it with him, much to Pepper's displeasure. If you're gonna bite the dust wearing something, believe me, you'd want it to be this. Iron Man fans could only hope that Tony would go out in style, and with Mark 50, he did just that. There you have it, that's just the tip of the iceberg. Did I mention one of your favorite suits or do you wanna school me? Let me know in the comments section. Before you go, be sure to give this video a big thumbs up and don't forget to hit that subscribe button. You wouldn't wanna miss a thing on your favorite TV and movies now, would you? Until next time guys, thanks for watching. I'll catch you in the next video.